Good evening. Good evening, guys. I am going to start our chat box here and make sure we can see that. Welcome, welcome. Let me know, all of you, who's here and where you're watching from. This webinar is recording now at the start since the last time we forgot to record. So, hey, Lori, how's it going? As soon as you hop in here, guys, just let us know where you're watching from. We have a couple more minutes to be able to make sure everybody hops on and is able to catch this presentation on the 15 invaluable laws of growth. Hey, Twilight there from Canada. Welcome. So glad to see you here. Excited to be able to share with all of you. Yes. Hey, Nancy, how are you? There is Trudy. Trudy from Illinois, welcome. Great to see you all here. This, you will find, is going to be highly interactive, and there's nothing like energy in the chat box to be able to keep the energy high, and there would be nothing worse than having a webinar where you actually didn't have any energy at all. So we're going to keep this uh, chat box going, and hey, Denise, how's it going? So glad you guys could make it. I see uh, Lisa's calling in or watching here from Alabama and make sure that you're actually sending the message to everyone and not just the host and panelists so everyone can see that you're uh, posting comments here and be able to hear some feedback from you all. So again, like I said, we have one more minute before we get started. Welcome to everyone. Thank you so much for taking time to be able to learn and grow in this information session just an overview of the 15 invaluable laws of growth from our favorite person and mentor and leadership guru, John C. Maxwell. All right, exactly seven o'clock here. So I'm gonna go ahead and kick this off and just welcome you all. This presentation is being hosted by Genesis Coaching and Consulting Group. We are super excited to be able to share this information with you about um, the 15 Invaluable Laws of Growth by Dr. John C. Maxwell. Again, why did Genesis Coaching and Consulting Group choose John to be our mentor and business teacher for being able to bring and shine a light on leadership and values uh, to the rest of the world is mainly because Number one, he is a man of faith. Number two, he's highly successful at going from a pastor to the leadership guru of the world by all sorts of leadership uh, uh, businesses and companies out there, including Inc. Magazine. Um, you know, it's, it's really great to be able to hear his personal story. And someday, if you haven't had a chance, be sure that you can uh, look up the information about John. Very, very intriguing and, of course, inspiring as well. He has written over 77 books worth more than 24 million copies sold. And this one, The 15 Invaluable Laws of Growth, is, of course, one of our favorites. Uh, not only for the professional world, but also for the um, just the normal people like yourself and myself um, who just want to learn and grow and be the best that they can be in life at work as well as at home. So let me go ahead and kick this off and let you know, be sure that you stay to the end because I actually have a special offer for those of you who want to continue on in the study of the 15 invaluable laws of growth and would love to be able to share that with you, uh, but I don't wanna ruin it before we even get started. So let's go ahead and kick this off with our, uh, our uh, beginning of going through all of the 15 laws. Now tonight, we're not gonna cover all of them. I promise you, we're gonna keep this to 30 to 40 minutes and make sure that we value your time and uh, start off with just kind of covering a little bit of an overview. So what are the 15 invaluable laws of growth? You can read this, but I'm going to cover them quickly. The law of intentionality, the law of the mirror, the law of the environment, the law of pain, which is one of, going to be one of our focuses tonight, the law of awareness, the law of consistency. Oh boy, we all could probably take a lesson in that one just alone and talk, talk probably for the entire night just about the consistency alone. The law of design, Oh, you know what? We just actually recreated that one. Learning to pursue pause. Learning to pause allows growth to catch up with you. And I just realized my return button is not working. 
All right, and the next one's the law of the ladder. You know, honestly, this is one of my favorites. Uh, and I will tell you, all of these are gonna load on here. And I will tell you this law of the ladder, although we're not covering it tonight, is probably one of my favorites that I initially learned about when I first studied the 15 invaluable laws of growth. And one of the things that John talks about in that is the character of growth determines the height of personal growth. And so again, congratulations to all of you because you are here because you're looking for personal growth. And when we talk about the law of the ladder, my goodness, one of my favorites when we start our next mastermind group, we'll definitely dig into that much, much more. In that same chapter of John's book, Doug Firebaugh said, achievement to most people is something you do, but to the high achiever, it's something you are. Again, my goodness, lots and lots of great content in that law of the ladder. The law of the trade-offs, the higher the climb, the tougher the trade-offs. How many of you, can I get a little bit of an amen on that if you know what that's about? Any of you who are pursuing success and professional development and all of these things, that is definitely one of the things that we have to recognize. And, uh, and you know, whether we're putting some, um, uh, putting in the law of being able to say no to certain things to be able to trade off for something else, hmm. Again, something else that we can actually uh, spend an entire night talking about. The law of modeling, the law of contribution. That one's very important to us here at Genesis with our not-for-profit and everything that we uh, bring into the company uh, percentage of that goes to giving back, which all of you should be able to resonate with. The law of the rubber band. Again, another incredible law that everyone should be uh, pursuing to be able to get out of your comfort zone. The law of curiosity and the law of expansion. As you can see, 15 laws. There's so much content to cover. Uh, tonight, we're going to cover a couple of those. Um, but again, as I mentioned earlier, we're going to talk about how you can actually dig into all of these with lots and lots of detail and value that you're going to um, take home with you and be able to even share that with your kids and your grandkids and nieces and nephews and maybe even your spouse. <laughs> All right, live these laws and reach your potential. Now I'm gonna be completely honest. I am a work in progress. I have known about this book for a long time and I'm still a work in progress in the majority of these. So let's just all agree to agree with each other that we're all a work in progress and all of these things. We can focus on one or a couple of them at a time and uh, just try and live these out in our lives. Uh, but we're all going to continue to be students always. All right. Let's go ahead and kick this off. The two that we're going to actually focus on tonight, and the majority of it will be the law of pain, and we'll just do a little bit of an a, a overview of the law of the rubber band as well, but I didn't want to uh, leave that one out because I think that, again, is some of the roadblocks for many of us in at home and at work is really getting out of our comfort zone. So congratulations again for you even hopping on this call tonight, because again, for some people, that's even getting out of your comfort zone is sitting, getting on a call and listening about personal growth. And, you know, some of us are encouraged and some of us are convicted. <laughs> so the law of pain, good management of bad experience leads to great growth. How many of you would say that, my goodness, bad experiences, who wants bad experiences? Wow. Uh, the law of the rubber band, growing to your full potential requires stretching out of your comfort zone. We hear that all the time in, uh, you know, mostly in the workforce and whether it's corporate America, even for not-for-profits about just getting out of your comfort zone and doing things that you haven't done before. So well, I want to hear it in the, in the comments here. How many of you, when was the last time you did something that you'd never done before? Or when was the last time that you did something that really stretched you out of your comfort zone? I want to hear about that a little bit later. We'll dig into that a little bit more later. All right. Like I said, the law of pain, again, is something that tells us that we're going to, we, we're, all of life is going to require that we go through some bad experiences. And I will tell you that John likes, oops, sorry about that, that good management of bad experiences lead to great growth. Now, how many of you, if I could see you right now, would raise your hand and say, I love bad experiences because it leads me to great growth. Be honest, how many of you <laughs> give me an eye if that is nonsense? No one ever wants to have bad experiences, 
But I would say that looking back in my life, whether it's in corporate world, I happen to have spent 20 years in corporate healthcare. I will tell you that I never begged for a bad experience, but everyone has them. Yes. And in retrospect, never at the time did I ever say that bad experience is fantastic. But I will say in retrospect that that bad experience did help me to grow and taught me something every single time. And truth be told, if we were really going to look at those bad experiences, we would actually say that most people, whether it's in, again, corporate healthcare, corporate world, or even in our personal lives, most people will resonate with the struggles that we had more than they'll ever resonate with the successes and the victories that we had. And unfortunately, that is the case. But it also is about how you handle those bad experiences will help you resonate with other people and sympathize with other people who are going through those same things. Now, I know that there's some people who, who may say and actually know that bad experiences, that the, the pain is unavoidable and that you actually can learn and grow from those things. And even if you don't actually ask for them, that you can actually be a huge blessing to other people as you grow through them. And John likes to call this, um, you know, there's several things we're going to talk about tonight, but, you know, being able to learn from those bad experiences is where you recognize that pain is unavoidable, whether it's an uncomfortable situation, whether it's a, it's an unmanageable situation, any kind of bad experience that you can think of every time it will help you to grow every problem. John McDonald says, introduces a person to themselves. Now in here, whether, whether you're a guy, whether you're a gal, it doesn't matter. Every problem introduces us to ourselves because how we handle those, whether it's in a reactive state or in a responsive state, either way, it introduces you and shows, shines a light on the person that you are from the inside out. And John really talks about this a little bit later. We're actually gonna watch a little bit of a clip from John. Um, again, something that you can actually expect if you decide I wanna move further into learning about the 15 invaluable laws and do, whether it's through coaching or whether it's through group, uh, group trainings and those kinds of things. We'll be watching some videos from the master storyteller himself, John Maxwell, as well as walking through the book and workbook um, and learning how to grow. And honestly, the bottom line with this law for the law of pain is that everyone has bad experiences and we can't avoid them. You know, there are some people who run away from them as quickly as possible, but other people, those who embrace bad experiences or the, these troubles and things like that that you run into out in the world or in your life, those people that embrace it, those are usually the leaders, they choose to learn from those difficult and challenging experiences rather than store them up in a place where they actually uh, start to manifest and fester literally those bad experiences if they don't handle them in the right way. And I know that all of you guys have names and faces flashing before your eyes right now. Give me an amen if you know of people who have not handled or are not handling bad experiences at this time in their life where it actually gives them physiological, physical, emotional uh, baggage and, and issues that they are not able to handle in their life outside of just thinking about those kinds of things um, for how, the, how they handle their pain. And I will tell you, um, you know, some of those things are not physical pain. Some of those are things that they didn't handle in life, whether it was a bad experience at work, someone didn't agree with them, they got in an argument with their boss, whatever those kinds of bad experiences might be for me in my personal life, I will tell you, uh, one example that happened to me is because I love speaking, I love keynotes, I love, you know, just providing value to people in um, trainings and experiences that I've had. Um, one of those was actually at one of the first speaking events that I uh, had agreed to provide for a company. And I will tell you, as much as I prepared, prepared, prepared for that speaking event, the craziest thing happened to me in my early stages of speaking. And in that preparation, something happened on that stage. And I literally fro forgot what I was going to say next, froze, forgot what I was going to say next. And those of you who, who know speaking in, in public for some people is like, they'd rather die than do that. Right. 
But for me, because I, I, I do love it, I, that pause, it was maybe 15 or 20 second pause was the most uncomfortable thing I've ever experienced. I think pretty sure I was having hot flashes. I'm, my heart was beating out of my chest. And I thought, where was I going with this thought? <laughs> Again, you can agree, bad experience. Write that in the comment if you get what I'm saying. That happened, but I will tell you, I couldn't get over when this was done. I literally had people saying that pause if you felt like that was uncomfortable, we thought, oh my goodness, it was a powerful pause after the statement that you made before for us to really sink in and think about that. So that pause actually gave more power to what you were talking about than if you would have went on and carried on to the next thought. And so there you go. There are times when bad experiences can actually turn out for good. Again, I'm going to repeat those of you guys who are making comments on here. Be sure that you're uh, choosing everyone and not just the host and panelists so that everyone can see your comments because I can see that uh, everyone can learn from what it is that you're saying. So be sure that you're choosing uh, to send your messages to everyone. But anyway, let me go ahead. I digress. One of those things, again, um, that John talks about in this law of pain is about pain files. Now, what does he mean? Like you can picture a file cabinet and he doesn't mean that actually it's a physical file cabinet, but he said, in my heart, I store up lots of different pain files is what he calls them. One of them may be the pain of incompetence. I should have seen that coming or the pain of financial loss. If I could have gotten that back or the pain of not being number one, I would be at the top if it wasn't for dot, dot, dot. Oh my goodness, lots of us can think of how to fill in the blanks with that. Or the pain of change. What are they doing? They should have listened to me, right? The pain files that he's talking about here is one of those things where it's woulda, shoulda, coulda, right? How many of you, give me, uh, give me an amen if you understand the shoulda, coulda, woulda thing that can keep people stuck, stuck in a place where they do not want to be and not making forward progress in their personal and professional development so that they can attract the people into their life that will help them go to a place of accomplishment, forward progress towards goals, whether it could be a family's dream of what they want to be able to do, whatever it is, but sometimes people get stuck in those pain files of woulda, coulda, shoulda, and they lose the ability to be able to move forward from that. And so um, John talks a lot about that in this chapter and in his video, and I'm anxious for you to kind of see a little bit more about that. The other thing, living it, the law of pain, live it. Do you become bitter or do you become better when things that you don't want to have happen, happen to you? Bad experiences, uh, uh, arguments, fights, you know, bad boss, you know, all those kinds of things that can happen in life. My goodness, we could probably write up an entire dry erase board of all the bad experiences that could possibly happen in our lives or already have. And if they haven't happened to you yet, they're going to. Um, but he talks about this choice is really ours to make. And I love to be able to, you know, personalize this because this is the same for me as it is for you that we all have to ask ourselves, is this making me bitter or is it making me better? And again, we could talk all night about this just one step, but how to turn pain into gain. Positive life stance. You know, John talks a lot about this and he's gonna talk a little bit about this in the video that you're gonna watch at the end here. Uh, but some people, when they have this, um, these, these files where they cannot get past these things, and they get locked up in those things, it's because of the life stance, or I like to see it as the lens that they view life through. If someone's stuck in those woulda, coulda, shouldas, or, or if you're, if you're going to get bitter instead of better, that lens that you view all the circumstances and things that come into your life is going to be clouded clouded with negativity and things that will hold you back from being and becoming all that you want to be. But as you have a positive life stance and you say, you know what, I can learn from this. I can grow from this. Those are the times where you actually will see clearly through that lens where you're trying to go. And of course, obviously things are hindsight's 2020. There's plenty of things I will tell you, as I mentioned earlier, that happened to me that I am definitely a work in progress, but that positive life stance or 
negative life stance is always going to either give you clarity or taint what it is that you're looking at. Neil Donald Walsh says, and John quotes this in his book, you know, life begins at the end, end of uh, your comfort zone. And that means even in this instance with this law of pain is getting out of your comfort zone sometimes is about being able to see and embrace, like John says here, those values of bad experiences so that you can grow from it and not just sour from those experiences. And of course, obviously making intentional good changes, good changes so that you can actually uh, move forward quickly, you know, and again, because it's a work in progress, you can either move quickly through it as you ex ex expect that you're going to be able to learn something from this. It's always going to be, be able to help you to move through those things very quickly. All right. I want you to share in the comments, honestly, um, you know, if you've had a bad experience um, that you were able to actually use that bad experience as something that wasn't a setback, but actually helped you grow um, from being able to experience that. And obviously in the first 24 hours, let me just, I, you know, in the first 24 hours, let's say you didn't have that growing experience, but as you were able to sit back and if you, if you're willing to share something that you've learned from that was not necessarily in the first time it happened, that was a bad experience. Um, but later on, we're able to learn from that. Hey, be bold and courageous. Share that with your, the, the people that are on here. I'm pretty sure we have uh, 20 something people who are on here that they actually learn from those bad experiences. I love that we can learn from each other. And like I said, whenever you learn in, in anything that is trained on by Genesis coaches, you're going to find that we love to work together, learn together, grow together, and interactive is all we do here. All right. Let's see here. Um, you know, the one thing that I will tell you also is, you know, uh, I heard one of our mentors say before is that, you know, this part about what John's talking about, what you focus on is truly, truly um, how you deal with painful situations. And, and when John's talking here about the law of pain and lead it, how do you apply this law to your life? And, you know, what you focus on, you find what you focus on grows. What you focus on seems real. And ultimately what you focus on, you become. That is why it's so imperative that we ask ourselves these questions. And as we move along and learn through the 15 invaluable laws of growth, how we can apply these things to our life is because this is the person that you become, the things that you focus on. So when you're asking these questions, how do you deal with pain? You know, do you avoid it at all costs or endure it because you have to? Oh boy. And do you embrace the pain and stay positive? I have found personally that the people that I surround myself impact my ability to stay positive. How many of you would agree that, you know, when you hang around negative uh, naysayers, you're going to become like those negative naysayers. But when you, it's much easier to embrace pain and stay positive when you surround yourself with other positive people. Love that. I want to scroll through these comments a little bit and make sure we bring up, yes, what you tell your mind, it believes. I love that, Lori. I'm going to move this chat box over a little bit so I can read that. We become like the five people that we spend the most time with. Amen. And Terry, I had half my office leave to open their own place all at once. Oh my gosh. I remember Terry when that happened. And that is truly, truly when it happens at that time. I remember that that was definitely terrible at that very first moment, but it's so great that you can look back and see the blessing of it in your life. And my goodness, how many of you would agree the number of, of the new people that enter your life when those kinds of things happen, it's just fantastic to know that they were meant to exit and other were people were meant to enter into your life. And of course, looking back, it always is a beautiful, beautiful thing. It's just a matter of us being able to recognize that this too shall pass. And I will wake up on the other side of this with more blessing and learning and growth in my life. Yes, Amanda, I wake up every day and tell myself that I'm going to have a great day before my feet even hit the ground. I love that. Guys, take a lesson from that. If you're not starting your day with gratitude, it's also another thing that hinders us from being able to start off positive and go forward in the day positive. And guess what else, guys? 
It's also an example if you guys have kids at home or grandkids, nieces, and nephews, of course, even spouses. If you those people in your life see how you cope with things that are unfair, bad experiences, or even how you start the day, like Amanda said, those are incredible examples to how to deal with life. And I, I can't tell you the number, I will tell you the first 10 years of my marriage did not start like that, but here now we look back in the last 23 years and realize how far we've come because we've learned that number one, starting our day with gratitude, but also learning to deal with circumstances that suck. Is that, is that a good word to use? <laughs> All right, next growth, the law of pain, lead it moving forward. You know, this is a great way, you know, some of you work with teams, some of you work closely with the family, moving forward, getting the input from others. You know, this is a great way. Um, if you're, if you're willing to hear the good and the bad, it's a great way to learn and grow from others, how you handle challenging times, how you handle challenging people, how you handle, uh, you know, the, the bad experiences that happen, you know, I don't care if it's going through the drive through and spilling your coffee, all of your new outfit that you just bought, those are bad experiences, <laughs> but they're also things that maybe you're not learning something actually, you know, uh, intellectual from it, but you're learning how to cope and uh, put on a smile, go change your clothes. Or if you're like me, you just go wear your clothes to go wear your clothes like that to work and not really even care. But having the positive attitude, yes, Jeff, perspective is your prison or your power. Amen. That is so true. Um, and and again, perspective about things like that that happen and whether or not you're going to embrace it or you're going to become that bitter person that no one wants to be around. So very good lesson there. Now, I want to go ahead and move forward. As uh, I mentioned, I want to make sure I'm not keeping you guys on here too long, but there is a five minute video. I just want to uh, preface this with, I'm going to fast forward through to about 11 minutes. This is John sharing a story about a bad experience that happened to him taking a gun at, that was a gift given to him, by the way. A gun given to him, took it to the airport, ended up in jail with his mugshot and everything else, which it, it's really funny, but I, we don't have the time to be able to watch the whole thing. But you can, by the way, if you decide to bring yourself and maybe a team or friends to this full mastermind of the 15 Invaluable Laws of Growth. But I'm going to start us off after he shares that story. And uh, he, like I said, he is just a master storyteller and you're going to enjoy this. Oops, if I can find my cursor. Here we go. is in pain there's a lot of lessons to learn and i learned a lot of lessons from there and, and i'm going to share with you just some of the stuff that i've learned but before i share with you some of the stuff i've learned i think you should look at your neighbor and, and just say you know we truly are listening to a stupid man i think that would be good he's you know he's our friend but he isn't very smart you know what i'm saying he's so here's what i know about bad experiences tell me if you relate to this uh, raise your hand if you believe that everyone has bad experiences how many of you relate to that, huh? How many of you have a bad experience you're going through right now? How many of you are sitting beside that bad experience? Oh, uh oh. Some of you who just raised your hand on that last question, you now have a bad experience. Even a worse experience than you thought that you had. You know, is, isn't it true? Some days you're the pigeon. And some days you're the statue. That's so good, isn't it? I just love that. I, what was John known for when he died? Well, the pigeon statue quotes what he was known for. I remember in 2008 when the economy really went bad. And, and I, I, I sat down and I wrote a speech on how, how, to, how, to do, how to do good when things turn out bad. And it became a huge popular speech and probably for three years, 2008, 2011, everywhere I went, people would say, do that, do that, how to do good when things go bad speech. What were they wanting? They were wanting to, to get some hope because everybody was going through, a, many people were going through great financial distress. So everybody, everybody has a bad experiences. We're experiencing it. And, and if you don't have one right now, just guess what? I got good news for you. You'll have one tomorrow. Because that's the way life is, isn't it? I mean, life is just that way. And, and what we do with that bad experience is really who we become. 
And that's kind of a theme of, of this of this law. So anyway, everyone has them. The second thing I would say about bad experiences is no one likes them. No one likes I have never run into a person and say, you know what? I get totally motivated by bad experiences. I mean, there's just something that is endearing about losing my money, losing my health. I mean, oh my gosh, if I could just have a bad day, it would really be a great day. No, 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 no one like, I've never read a, you know, it's, 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 it's like Lucy who's told Charlie Brown one time. She says, I don't want ups and downs. I just want ups. And I think that's where all of us, I mean, I mean, we, if, we, if we could vote, how many of you would vote for ups? I mean, how many of you vote for ups? I mean, how many now would vote for downs? Well, I mean, that's almost like an IQ question. I mean, vote for downs. Who wants it? I mean, who wants a down? But, but we all have them. No one likes them. But here's what I want you to catch. Few, very few make bad experiences positive experiences. And what this lesson is all about, what this law is all about is when you have a bad experience, how do you make it a positive experience? How do you turn something dark into something bright? Warren Lester said, success in life comes not from holding a good hand, but in playing a poor hand well. And I love that. Because every one of us, have, when it comes to life, have held in our hands a stack of cards, a deck of cards, of, of which we, they, they just weren't good. So how do I turn my pain into gain? Number one, choose a positive life stance. Now, I like this better than somebody just saying choose a positive attitude. Because a, a positive life stance is your overall frame of reference. It's my overall frame of reference. It's in other words, it's a set of attitudes. It's a set of assumptions. It's a set of expectations that people have about themselves and about their world. And so a positive life stance means that, that I have a positive set of expectations and assumptions about my, about my life. And, and I, in fact, it's so important that I have it laminated and, and I pull this out once in a while. Now you have to understand when something's important to me, I laminate it. Okay, that's you just have to understand that's what I do. I, I don't know what I just there's something I like about laminating. It, 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 it's just it, it doesn't tear. It's it, I, if, if I would have been Moses. Yeah, I, I would have. If I'd have been Moses, I'd gone on top of Mount Sinai. I'd have laminated those Ten Commandments. I sure really wouldn't put them on stone. Those babies break. You know that. I had a laminate and I had it stuck in them in every little pocket I could find. I said, hey, you take that, take that, take that. I, I, I would laminate. So I laminate important things. And so when I talk about this positive life stance, it's laminated. And I'm going to take you through it because this makes all the sense in the world. And when I give it to you, you're going to say, this is a tool I can use. I can have a positive life stance. So here it is. Number one, life is filled with good and bad. That's just a fact. In your life and my life, there's no such thing as all good. And there's no such thing as all bad. But there is such a thing as good and bad. We have good days, we have bad days. We have highs, we have lows. Is that not true? I mean, that's true for all of us. So it's not like one person got lucky and one person got unlucky. Unlucky people have good things happen to them and lucky people have bad things happen to them. So good and bad, life is just filled with good and bad. Number two, some of the good and bad I can't control. It's just life. In other words, there's some things that happened to me that are really good, and I can't take any credit for me I, for it. I, it just it came my way. And there's some things that, that happened to me that they're really bad, but but I couldn't control that either. It's just it just came away. Or, or, would you relate to that, huh? In other words, it was out of my control. It wasn't anything that I could have done. And positive attitude, negative attitude doesn't really matter. There's just some things that are going to happen to you that are going to be good in life, and some things that are going to be that are bad. And, and the third thing is some of the good. And some of the bad will find me. It's going to find you. In other words, good things come looking for you, but bad things come looking for you, okay? And, and, and it's going to find you. And we'd like to duck, but it'll find you. And number four, if I have a positive lifespan, if I have a positive life stance, if my, in other words, I got this mental positive assumption. Here's what I know. If I have a positive life stance, the good and the bad will become better. I didn't say if I have a positive life stance that the, the bad will disappear. It won't. It'll just get a little bit better. Are you with me? The good will get a little bit gooder, okay? And, and the bad will get a little bit better, okay? It just will. 
if I have a positive life. Now, number five, if I have a negative life stance, that's my way of living is basically seen through a negative lens. If I have a negative life stance, the good and the bad will become worse. In other words, a negative lens will take everything and, and, and take it south, make it worse, just like a positive lens or a life stance will take everything and make it a little bit better. Now, now that I know that, now let me read it to you. Life is filled with good and bad. Some of the good and bad I can't control. It's life. Some of the good and bad will find me. If I have a positive life stance, the good and the bad will become better. If I have a negative life stance, the good and bad will become worse. Therefore, I choose a positive life stance. This is essential. This is essential if you're going to get the great value out of the law of pain. It's essential to understand that what you and I do have control of is not our circumstances, but how we handle those circumstances. And the best way to do it is, to, I think, develop a positive life stance. Another way to turn pain. All right. How many of you want to intentionally choose a positive life stance? Wow. Love, love. This is why I follow John. This is why I Genesis Coaching and Consulting Group has this as our backbone is because everything that he shares is of utter value at work and in life. You know what, guys? I am going to go through this quickly because I said I was going to make sure that this was around 40 minutes long, so I'm not keeping you here all evening, but I do want to cover a little bit on the, the, the law of the rubber band. Growth stops when you lose the tension between where you are and where you could be. Wow. I'm going to leave that on here so you can write that down. Growth stops when you lose the tension between where you are and where you could be. How many of you guys know someone in your life at work or at home that binge watching Netflix and those types of things are where their life is on a continual basis where you don't see any type of, uh, you know, the complacency sets in, the uh, maybe even sedentary life sets in, the, you know, I just don't have any interest whatsoever of keeping that taut tension between where I am and where I want to be, my goodness, how attractive is that to other people? How, what kind of people are they attracting into their lives? John says that if we're growing, we are always, always outside of our comfort zone. Never get comfortable. As soon as we get comfortable, we are complacent and we are, uh, we, we are, fatiguing every muscle in our body um, that atrophies in our brain, in our bodies, because of no, no tension between where we are and where we want to be. And so, yes, oh my goodness, these comments ne never, get un never get comfortable. And yes, there are a lot of people who are complacent. And you know, think about it. Are they somebody you want to spend a lot of time with? You know, you guys are on this call because you want to have personal and professional growth. So congratulations, that is not going to be ever you. I'm deciding that for you tonight. <laughs> oh, let me quickly go through these. The, the law of the rubber band, few people ever want to be stretched. Of course now we don't wanna be stretched, but those of us who choose to are gonna be the ones who actually will make forward progress. Avoid settling for the status quo. Again, same thing of, of not allowing ourselves to sit in on status quo and becoming complacent in our life, whether it's in, in our personal life and our professional life, always, all these things are applicable. Uh, one of my favorite things I've heard uh, said before is that God's gift to us is potential and our gift to God is developing it. He gave each one of us each one of you, Trudy, Jeannie, Amanda, Nancy, Lisa, he gave each of us gifts and talents to be used to be a blessing to other people as we grow into the person that we were meant to be. So his gift is our potential and our gift is giving back to him is for us to actually develop it. Stretching is an inside job. Oh boy, definitely an inside job. Stretching always requires change, even for those of us who actually uh, don't really like change. It's a necessary component to personal and professional growth. And 
is, of course, getting us out of our comfort zone. Stretching sets you apart from others. Wow. Three to 5% of the people actually are those high achievers who want to get out there and expand themselves, grow themselves, no matter how uncomfortable they need to get in order to be able to become more than what they were yesterday. And your only competition, competition is ever yourself. Stretching can, can become a lifestyle. Some of you have committed to making sure that every single day you can start your day with gratitude. And some of you decide that spending, you know, 15 to 30 minutes of reading a book and growing and, you know, 15 Invaluable Laws is just one of the ones that I absolutely love. I love other authors as well. I just shared with our team uh, the, the energy bus from John Gordon. Again, lots of ways to stretch and grow to be able to become, again, a, a stronger, more um, stronger leader a more attractive leader. There are such a thing of being able to track people into your life because of the leader that you're becoming at home and at work. Stretching gives you a shot at significance. My goodness, there's never a time where uh, some of you may know some of the people who are leading uh, not-for-profits or some big corporations or some even some new small businesses. Stretching is absolutely always necessary to take a risk to start something new, but it is an opportunity to take a shot at significance in being able to create. And I had a, a professional, a gentleman who um, is a franchisee uh, in Las Vegas, and he said, I want to this year give birth to a business. Isn't it like that? Giving birth. Well, that just in, in itself gives you a picture and illustration of stretching, but giving birth to something it requires, you know, in, in, in business world requires taking risk, being able to, um, to learn and stretch and grow, bringing people along with you. But again, it is offering an opportunity at significance. He doesn't need any money. He's already very, very wealthy, but yet he still continues to learn and grow. And that is what is required for all of us to be able to um, have that shot at significance. Now, let me go ahead and, oops, sorry. Let's go ahead and, and uh, move forward. Those of you who decide, like I shared with you at the beginning, if you decide to uh, jump into our next mastermind or group training, we would say, uh, on a virtual one, or maybe you have an office that wants to have, you know, this continued professional development, this 15 Invaluable Laws of Growth is one of our most popular uh, group trainings that we do. Some of them are, you know, eight weeks masterminds where we combine several of the laws, or some of them are spread out over 15 weeks, if that's what your team decides, um, or maybe even a group of girlfriends. I mean, there's some of you who are part of a, a small group that are, are going through some of these different types of trainings. This one actually will include the video series that uh, John has provided for us to be able to watch. Again, we love training, but listening to John, the master storyteller is even more engaging uh, or Jeff boyfriends. Yep. Um, but it's a way to be able to listen. And then we go through not just the book that you're reading through, you know, as a group, but also there's a workbook, a participant guide, a workbook that goes through questions that you'll answer yourself, questions that you'll answer amongst yourselves, those types of things that will be able to help you learn and stretch and grow, but also retain the information that you're um, experiencing through this group training. So those of you who decide tonight, you can go ahead and comment in, in the uh, chat box if you want to have more information. But those of you who are on here live tonight, I'm going to give a 20 dollar discount for any of the mastermind. We have many coaches on the team um, to choose from that will be hosting uh, different types of masterminds and group trainings. Uh, but $20 off of yours, the typical price for the eight to eight to 15 week mastermind or group training is $199 per person. And we really keep that at a groups of 10 uh, minimum just for the sake of being able to have uh, the most value and efficiency for time and those kinds of things for everyone involved and more participation in group interactions. So groups of 10, if you have a team at your corporate office or in your team in your small business that you want to have them do one just for your team, we can put, uh, put those together with different coaches, those, if you decide and you bring a team of 10, your um, uh, registration is free. So bring none of your friends, bring none of your coworkers, whatever it is, yours will be free if you put together a group of, of 10 people to be able to join this mastermind and have lots of interaction and learn and grow from everyone. I will tell you that any of our coaches will tell you there, we are all a work in progress, but every time we teach it, 
we learn something new from the participants that are on there. So again, uh, send an email, respond to your email confirmations you got from this, or you can post in the comments in the chat box if you want to um, take advantage of that. I'm gonna give everybody um, through the end of Friday to be able to send me a message and let me know. Uh, we'd be happy to put this on for your team. And um, hopefully tonight has been just a little bit of an overview of how you can grow from the 15 invaluable laws of growth. And I just appreciate all of your time. So thank you so much. God bless you guys and have a great night.